Hi, this is Sophia, and welcome to Philosophy with Sophia. Today, I want to talk about Kantian ethics. Now, uh, disclaimer first, I apologize if I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly because it's either Kant or Kant, and I'm pretty sure it's not Kant because that would be weird, but I'm not completely sure, so just apologies if that's not actually how you pronounce his name. Anyways, Kantian ethics were created by the philosopher Immanuel Kant. Um, I believe he was German, but I may be mistaken about that. Anyways, um, so Kantian ethics starts from the basis of the categorical imperative, which is like a thing that everyone like has to do kind of, or like everyone is bound to, like a high hypothetical a hypothetical imperative would be like go to the doctor because you don't have to go to the doctor like if you just wanted to die you could not go to the doctor or you like don't want to get better like you don't have to but Kant thought that there were certain things you had to do if you were a rational being which we all are like you can't lie since we're all rational beings and rationally you know that you shouldn't lie then that's a categorical imperative that you have to do and because not lying is a rational moral, and we're rational beings, that means that we have to do it. I mean, it, it doesn't technically mean we have to do it, but that's just what Kant thought. Um, so then from these things, he had a couple of ideas that like went along with that that were kind of basically things he was saying were categorical imperatives. Like, you should only do something if you can imagine everyone else doing it all the time. So like, if you want to lie, you have to imagine everyone else all the time always lying. And if you would be okay with that, then you can lie. But if you wouldn't be okay with that, then you can't. It's, it's kind of useful sometimes, on occasion. Um, another one of them was to not treat people as a means to an end, but to treat them as an end themselves. So uh, he and Machiavelli would probably have not gotten along. Um, if you don't know who Machiavelli is, he's the author of a book called The Prince. Um, you probably learned about him in history, but you know, just in case, um, which is about like how to be a good ruler. Um, and he says to use people as a means to an end because people will like keep their promises and stuff. And also he says that it's better to be feared than loved. Anyways, that was a digression. We're not talking about Machiavelli. We're talking about Kantian ethics. Back to the actual subject. And then also, um, this goes along with the categorical imperative that when you have a rational will, it forces you to follow the categorical imperative. So basically, he was saying that like, just by the way we're born, we have to follow the categorical imperative and like, that's where morals come from. Like, because we're rational, we just know what's right and wrong, the morals, um, which is based on the categorical imperative. So then there are some influences that people think are why Kant created this. Like, obviously no one actually knows because we're not Kant and he didn't write where his influences came from. But these are what some other philosophers who studied Kant's ethics have said um, about them. So one of the influences was probably um, a Lutheran sect called Pietism, which his parents followed. Also Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who was another philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau wrote a book called The Social Contract, um, and some of his philosophies might have also influenced the Constitution, but I can't actually remember because I know like a bunch of Enlightenment philosophers influenced them, like Voltaire and Diderot, but I don't actually know if specifically Rousseau did, but he was around the same time, so he might have. Just a slight connection that could actually not be true. Um, also some contemporary ethical debates, contemporary to Kant, obviously, not now because Kant is dead. Um, he was, died a long time ago, he was before Nietzsche. And also uh, natural law and, and intuitism, which is sort of a different kind of philosophy that says that um, human beings naturally know what morals are, like what is right and wrong, just like intrinsically from birth. People who are influenced by Kant's ethics include, um, I believe his name is Jürgen Habermas, but he's German and I could have that completely incorrectly. 
also Jean Rawls and Jacques Lacan. And then a couple contemporary people who like follow Kant's ethics and or like are Kantian sort of scholars, I guess you would say, are um, Honora O'Neill and Marcia Bacon. And then there are a bunch of critics of his work as there are critics of everything. The first four are German, Hegel, Schopenhauer, and Nietzsche. And then uh, John Stuart Mill, a bunch of people who follow virtue ethics and Interestingly enough, the Catholic Church, the whole entire Catholic Church, just the church. Anyways, <laughs> that was weird. Did not need to say that. Um, but yeah, that's basically Kantian ethics and like all that sort of stuff. And I think I talked a lot more about influences and influenced by than I actually talked about his philosophy, but you know, that's okay. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and probably, yeah, you should probably just look up actually about Kantian ethics because I explained this horribly. And if you're interested in anything about Kant, you know, any of the people that I talked about in this video, any of the things, you should definitely look it up yourself because I'm really bad at making videos and probably none of this made sense. So anyway, um, thanks for watching me. BMS and I'll see you in my next video.